My name is Chris Jacobs. I'm the creator of Vallejo Historic Home Support. Today we're talking about backup power supply or backup power sources you could use if, for example, PG&E was to turn your power off during wildfire season. Next up on the list is a power inverter. What a power inverter does, it takes DC current, it turns it into AC current. This one's designed specifically to hook up to your car. So you put these guys on your car battery, and we're going to talk about the exact order of how to do that. And then it turns the car battery's DC power into AC. You can plug into it, flip it on, and, uh, and you'll have basically power to maybe charge your phone or, or some other purpose. This one here happens to be a 750 watt power inverter. Um, in, the, in the links for the video, we're going to have, I'll, I'll put two on there. I'll put a 300 and something around a 500. I'll, I'll select. 750 is a lot for a car. Uh, even with the engine running, you're probably going to kill that battery. It's not going to make it. I mean, I use this on my car, but I don't pull 750 off it. I pull a lot, lot, lot less. So, okay. On the back, uh, anytime we're dealing with DC, or really anytime we're dealing with electricity at all, we want to make sure we have really good connections. So make sure these are firmly attached. And the rule with DC is that you attach the positive first, the red first, and then you attach the black last. If there's any other attachments, you would attach the black last. With Many people are familiar with AC power in their house. And AC power usually has a black wire and a white wire. The black wire is the hot, the positive. The white wire is the neutral. And with AC, you attach the neutral first. That way the power has somewhere to go. It keeps you from getting shocked. With DC, it's, it's, it's the inverse. The black is the neutral. And the red is the hot. And you want to attach the hot first because you don't want to, this can arc. If this, if, if this was, if, uh, if a battery was attached without the positive being attached to the battery, it can create a spark. So that's what we're trying to do, just slightly safer. Okay, so you uh, attach it to your car. Red first, black second. Make sure the inverter is off. It's critical because you don't want to be pulling power while you're trying to attach it. Again, you're going to make a spark, make an arc. Turn your car on. Do not run this with your car off. Um, <clears throat> turn your car on. Turn it on. Turn the inverter on. Maybe put a, uh, an extension cord to this and run it in your house. It can't do more power than, than what it inverts. So take, take a look at what you're trying to run. If you're trying to run a coffee maker that's 800 watts, this is 750 it can surge. There's two things. There's continuous power and surge power. This can surge up to 1,500, but it can't maintain it for long. And more importantly, your car is not going to maintain it for long. This is really ideal, again, for charging cell phones, for charging laptops, for charging your electronics. Interestingly enough, we just talked about this one in the last video. I put this on my counter. I plug my stove into it because my stove doesn't work without a little bit of electricity. This is where we charge our cell phones and charge our laptops. And about, you know, Every three days, I hook this to my car, run an extension cord under my kitchen door, and I charge this. And uh, that's on a power strip. We charge kind of all the electronics at once, and this gets all charged up, and uh, we go out another couple days. All right, next up, we're going to talk about a power inverter, but of a larger size, something a bit bigger, something that's a bit more like uh, the kind of power inverter you'd see in a small cabin with running solar. So stay tuned for that video. Great.